debate matrix here. I do not believe in evolution. I don't believe in evolution for the same reasons that I don't believe that this rubber bath toy that resembles a crab is a living crab. You see, I can observe that this crab is made out of rubber. It has painted eyeballs. It's made in China. It has wear and tear from being used as a bath toy. This is not a living, breathing crab. I can, if I were to open it up, I would find that it is empty inside. It does not exhibit the properties that a living creature would. This crab is not alive, and I know that to be true based upon observation, data, and repeatable tests. I don't have to believe that this crab is alive. I can know that this crab is not alive. In the same sense, I do not need to believe evolution is true or false. I can know that it is true or false based upon observable data, information, statistics, and repeatable tests. In science, everything is labeled a theory. There's a reason for this. The philosophy of science states that everything that we observe should be categorized as a theory for a reason. We have the theory of gravity. Now, we can observe gravity in action. I drop my crab and he falls down. It's quite simple. That's gravity in action. But the theory of gravity is why that happens, how it happens, what mechanics are at work, what are the physics involved? Why is it that the crab falls down towards the planet? The ideas behind the theory of gravity are such that tomorrow it could be true that we find new data, new information that blows gravity out of the water. Our current understanding of how and why gravity works tomorrow could radically and forever be changed. But it gets better than that. The day after tomorrow, a whole new set of information could be discovered that again changes our ideas and our information about gravity. That is why it's called a theory. But unless and until a better theory of gravity is produced or discovered, we are reasonable to conclude that this is a good and solid theory of gravity that we currently maintain. We don't need to believe in the theory of gravity. We can affirm that it is true. It is true based upon our best observations and current data. Tomorrow it might be blown away. We don't know that. We can assume that that might happen. We can think that that might happen. We can even believe that that might happen. But any of those things do not fall into the category of scientific study or even the philosophy of science. We allow for that to happen. Tomorrow we might discover something that we didn't know today. The day after that we might discover something totally new and so on and so forth. Evolution, whether it's Darwinian evolution, Neo-Darwinian evolution, or other ideas of evolution, is theoretical. Some of it is better than others, and by better I mean there are more facts and theories to uh, examine. There are more cases to study and observe. There are lack of knowledges within evolution. That is to say, there are gaps with our knowledge. This is because some of the data is unobservable. This is because some of the data is so far in the past that we aren't sure. We must make educated guesses based upon what we do know, what we can observe. We assume that we will find data that will collaborate our current theories tomorrow, but we do remain open that that might be not the case. We always expect that our theories will be blown away by better information and better theorems tomorrow, next week, or next year.
That's just how science works. But nobody believes in evolution because you don't have to believe in it. You can know that it's true based upon what observations we can currently make. We can look at the data, we can examine the data, and we can do so without any bias, without any assumptions, without anything other than what does this say? What does this indicate? What does this show us? And what is the reasonable conclusion to make based upon what we can observe? Only in philosophy can we make theories based upon unobserved da data or ideas. One such controversy is the multiple universe theory. It's possible that another universe could exist, but we can't observe it. Is this science or is it philosophy? Scientists are debating whether or not this should be regulated to philosophy or whether or not this is a scientific theory. It is debated because the nature of our understanding of things is expanding and growing at an accelerated rate, faster and faster than it has ever done in the past. But we don't know yet. We're not sure. We can make a theory about it and we can think that that theory is sound and reasonable but we don't have to believe that the theory is true or false we can affirm that the theory is plausible and true based upon current observations here is a theory that none of us would deny we as people exist you are watching this video with this rubber crab. You are listening to my voice right now. This is a scientific as well as philosophical theory that nobody would deny. But tomorrow we might have new data and new information that would change our outlook forever. Whatever that data and information is, is currently unknown. So we base our theory that we are indeed existing upon data based on observation and repeatable results. We don't need to believe that we exist. We can know that we exist. We can know that the reality around us is real and true. We, many of you have probably seen the movie The Matrix. And if you haven't, check it out. It's a worthwhile science fiction movie. The main character of Neo accepts reality around him. He does so based upon observation and data. But he also thinks that there might be more to it. There might be something going on. There might be some sort of conspiracy at work. And he does base that observation on facts that he acquires. He questions those facts and is fairly skeptical of it. Not as skeptical as I might like, but still. Then, all of a sudden, he finds out that reality as he knows it is not real. In fact, the reality that he knows is an illusion. The real reality is grim filled with problems and issues that he has never expected to encounter before. Neo has a choice. Go back to the reality that he understands, or accept this new reality. He accepts the new reality and deals with it. We might tomorrow find ourselves in that situation. Tomorrow, I might find that I have been in the Matrix the whole time. I don't think that that will happen, but it could happen. Based upon observation and data that I currently have, it won't happen. I can reasonably assume that this reality is real, and I should treat it as if it was. I do that based upon data. My theory of reality is based upon that, and I don't have to believe that reality is real. 
It is my current theory. Tomorrow, new information might be presented to me that would blow it out of the water, and my theory would have to change. I would have to adapt to the new information and the new knowledge that I now gained. Similarly with evolution, we accept it as being true because it is based upon the best data that we currently can observe. Tomorrow it could be that new data comes along to blow it out of the water. We don't know that will happen. We can think it will happen. We can theorize that it will happen, but we just don't know. We don't have to believe in theories. We can know that for a reasonable certainty, they are true, at least for today. They might continue to be true tomorrow, or it might be that we will find new information or new data that will blow them out of the water. Let me talk then one moment in my next video about intelligent design briefly and cover why this is a philosophy rather than a scientific theorem. But for now, I want you, whoever you are, to never ever say the words, you believe in evolution again. Saying that is incorrect. Nobody has to believe in evolution. They can affirm it as a true and sound scientific theorem.